hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel and thank you for stopping by if today is your first time on here my name is judita and i make videos on faith relationships and lifestyle in general and in today's video you guys can tell that we have some beautiful ladies on the channel today i'm sure you've seen all of them but today we are here to give you guys a very interesting topic okay but before we get into the topic i would like them to introduce themselves we're going to start from my left <laughs> Hello guys, my name is Brenda Kiwi and I film on faith, motivation and lifestyle. I'm so humbled to be on Judita's channel today. <laughs> Hello guys, I'm called Elmo Carol. I'm a film on relationship growth lifestyle and I'm more than honored to be amongst three great women. Uh. <laughs> Hi sweetheart, I'm Yvette Alifo and I'm privileged to be here to, to be a blessing. You know, in whatever it is that we are going to be sharing with you today yeah. okay so you guys have heard um, all their names i'm sure you guys have seen them before but if you've not seen any of them please you head over to their channels and definitely subscribe because they have good content on their channels i'll leave their links in the description box and uh, straight into today's video we are going to be doing the sex talk we are going to be talking about sex and i would like for us to talk about it in three different ways i want us to talk about how we were introduced to sex as young African Cameroonian women and then we're going to move on to talking about how we began to see sex as we grew older and got into a stage of maturity and yeah and then we'll move on to talking about sex in marriage and um, for the previous point I was making I think we'd call that celibacy like that period where you say I mean for some people they didn't practice celibacy for some they did for some they tried and then it didn't work so we are going to like, like we're going to talk about all of that so the first uh, thing that I want us to dive into is sharing how we were introduced to sex like how were you introduced to sex how did you did you just say on TV did you, did you have somebody call you one-on-one -on -one and talk about it um, was it in school and um, we're going to begin with um, Carol me personally I was introduced to sex first time from the neighborhood I grew up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very ghetto neighborhood and the cause of child play this rough cartier children play that's how I got to know about it for learning and actually educating myself or somebody educating me who come from a place of boarding school in boarding school where they usually have conferences and they call for people to come and educate us about sex that's how I got the sex education okay okay let's move on to the event okay um I'm blessed to have a mom that you know has been teaching me the first education the only thing about sex that I knew, I got it off of my mom. She would sit me down, tell me stuff like, this is how, this is what sex is, this is how to go about it, this is what you have to do. Now you're seeing your message and all that, I have to tell you, to be careful and all that. So it's my mom that actually really taught me and is still teaching me a lot of things right now. So, um, yeah, that's how I got to know about sex. Okay, let's move on to Brenda. For me, sex was like the whole notion of sex because I grew up in a very typical Cameroonian African home that was like sex was a taboo topic. <laughs> so it was first in the neighborhood, like you just get people talk about it randomly. Mm -hmm. And then next boarding school too, where we always have when if they have if they teach you on your menstrual cycle and all, mm -hmm. especially single sex schools, they always bring up the topic of sex education. So. That was how I got to know about sex education. Oh, wow. I think one thing that is common for both of you is that quarter. Yeah. I think for myself too, I can't really tell you guys that I can pinpoint like this is where I got sex education from. But I can say for sure that this quarter kind of mommy play, play kind of thing. Yeah. And then also you just know growing up that there are some things that when it comes on on TV, it's a taboo for your eyes to be open. You have to either close your eyes or just digit or sneak out of the living room. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny yeah, that people, it's so funny that adults will be watching that in the presence of children and I mean I think there should have been a certain level of, yeah, of, of, of content control like what should you yeah, yeah instead instead of having to like close your eyes or act in one funny way and sometimes if you, I think at the stage where we had grown up it was us like when you're like yeah, yeah. Five, you know Ina Angelo yeah, you, yeah. You know, and your parents yeah, not even yeah. want you to watch and uh -huh. so I think for some a lot of us 
I think parents back then were probably even shy to have this conversation, or maybe they didn't even know how to. I mean, there's well, an exception for Yvette who had her mom who mm-hmm. gave her those thoughts, but I think that for a lot of parents, not speaking for everybody, I know that there are people whose parents actually sat them down. Yeah. But I don't think I had that sit down. I had more of um, don't have to be careful, and uh, don't you know? Not like this, you are big. Those kind of like you just know that there's something about you that you need to really guard, That's but you don't really have a proper like a processed education on yeah. what sex is. So now that we've established how and when we all got to know about sex, um, growing up now we get into young women and we've gotten to ages where we're probably having boyfriends, we're having relationships. Now I want us to go into talking about. Um, sex as a young adult mm-hmm. and before we get into that I want to establish a fact that we are Christian women and we believe in the Bible and we live by the Bible at least we try to live by the Bible mm-hmm. with the help of the Holy Spirit so we believe that sex out of marriage is wrong mm-hmm. sex out of marriage is not only wrong it's a sin so we are going to be talking when we talk about sex out of marriage we're actually trying to talk about sex education not the act of having sex out of marriage so we're going to be talking about um, our experiences with maybe having boyfriends and not having sex or having boyfriends and having sex or how it was for us generally so in this uh, particular point i would like to start with you to know like how was it for you having a boyfriend living with celibacy did you did you struggle with um, not having sex or were you just like flying away and just okay praise god um i decided at a very tender age that i was going to wait to marriage Having my mom to tell me on sex and all that, it really helped me to be able to carry this decision through. So, um, not that I did not date, I dated, but I made up my mind that I was going to wait till I finally get married to be able to have sex with my husband. So, um, I think that's something that you should try because you will be honoring God with your body and, you know, it's going to make sex just the way God created it to be having it in, like between a man and a woman so um and there's a lot of advantages in waiting so i think that's how i i, I saw it i waited so um that's my own opinion like this is my experience this is what i went through this is what i did i waited and it was not easy yeah but i did it praise god by the grace of god so, so during the yeah thank you so during that period i want to know like did you have like a you you, you mentioned earlier that you had a couple of boyfriends that's right did you have any of them who was like, <coughs> must do this thing? Yeah, of course I did. I remember having one particular <laughs> boyfriend that uh, it was really a problem because he really loved me and I loved him as well. And it was difficult for me as well. I'm not saying that it's a bit like it was just so easy. It's difficult sometimes. I'm like, why am I doing this? Let me just, mm-hmm. you know, give in. I, I'm making this guy suffer and I'm suffering myself. So, but I kept trusting God. Like, I'm trying to honor God. He's going to give me the strength to do it and give him patience as well. So, it got to a point that I had to go to my mom. Sometimes I feel like you can, you can go and do it elsewhere because if it's only me, I will not be able. I made up my mind and I'm not going to change it. God is going to, you know, honor me if I try, if I honor him. So, I think that that's my, that was my mindset, my experience. And um, so, that's how, that's how I. I went through into marriage. Praise God. Now, yeah, we'll move on to Brenda. Brenda, I would like to know your celibacy story. Celibacy it's, it's a very pivotal stage in the life of every Christian, especially when you get to encounter God in your teenage years or adult. On the contrary, for me, it was not the case. My case was, thank God, I've not really had many relationships. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. So. I had one relationship, another a long distance, and my husband. So yeah, this made things very easy for me. So the long distance can even be counted as a minus because we never ever met. <laughs> so but with the first, it was a case of okay, you don't have to do this thing, and it was for the longest time. Like okay, so for me, it was important that the person I had to get intimate with had the values I wanted the person to have. So sex was not just pleasure for me, sex was purpose because I was like, okay, if I have sex with this person, <laughs> if I have sex with this person, like, if, okay, if, if possibly there's a pregnancy, mm-hmm. will I be comfortable to tell the world that I'm pregnant for this person, that child be a child of purpose again? So, so for me, that was, it was not even God because initially when I met the person, I was not too Christian, Christian, Christian. It was at some point in the relationship that I really, 
got to know God personally, that fellowship and everything. So that was what celibacy was for me. For me, it was not just pleasure because for me, nothing is just pleasure. Not even drinking or anything. So everything is always too deep. So I was like, okay, if I'm with this person, okay, if something happens, is it going to be? So with that, it helped myself and me. In glory to God. I'm, I'm married now. He's married. It helped us to navigate through it. Though we had our own our own issues in the course of the relationship, but it helped us to put us on course at least for the longest time before we part ways. So I would say that that is how just knowing what I wanted out of life helped me navigate my safety journey. Let's talk to Carol about her safety experience, and it's going to be interesting to hear from her because. She's still in that place where she's not yet married. Yeah. So we are married, we are free fast, okay? <laughs> the multitude of us are not very safe. No, so. <laughs> so yeah, she's still in that place and we would like to hear like how it's going for her and what she thinks about it and all of that, like your experience with you. Alright, from beginning, from beginning for me, I'll say it was easier from beginning to say I'm living a life of silly basically. The, the decision came up unconsciously. It's not like I decided that I want to be celibate. It was just you a point of yeah. It was it. just a point of I was not interested to begin with. I was not even interested in dating to begin with. So when I even started dating, I felt like I was doing the guy a favor. So you can maybe just put the pressure. <laughs> Confidence one <laughs> over. Because I did not even want to get into it, and I have gotten out of my comfort zone to date you. Mm. I'm now doing a favor in you. So you yes. cannot just want to have two tables at the same time so. so that was how it was for me but when i got to the university and the reality dawned that okay you can now spend time with me and yeah. the feeling starts popping up mm-hmm. that's when now i had to that conscious effort has had a conscious effort came in place that i had to now sit and have the conversation okay this thing is a reality it's happening if it's happening among people who are in a relationship who are dating it's no longer about me but it's no longer about me doing a favor so we have to now come to the agreement of what we want how we see it how it's going to be for us but so he just accepted with what i wanted at that time and i just continued with that flow like okay i cannot do this thing i cannot do this thing but not to say that if he did not want the celibacy part i would have been like okay no because you don't want to get bad dresses or whatsoever whatsoever i really conditioned my mind that it was happening it was a reality that was happening and if you're schooled in Moliko, you will know that it's a reality that is happening so it was not a point of if the person wants the person is a bad person it's just a way of it starts from you your personal conviction what you want so if the person cannot go with what you want then you see how you guys can compromise or if you cannot compromise then maybe you and I think also we can even take it back to the basis of a relationship. How do you get into a relationship? It's just like Brenda said that it's more of purpose. Like you, yeah. if you get into a relationship with somebody, your you cannot be unequally yoked. Your ideas, your your values will definitely yeah, have right. to tie. And so you probably see somebody and in random conversations before it gets to the point of all relationship, the person would have figured that this is a Christian lady and if she's a Christian lady, then this is how it's going to be. I mean, even if the person do, doesn't think of it, when you get to that age where you know that you are open to relationships, but you know you are not open to sex, it will definitely be something you will slide in in conversations yeah. that you know is heading to a relationship. Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you, Brenda. So for me, um, dealing with celibacy, I do not even know this word celibacy, but I know one thing that I'm sure of. I was very afraid. I was afraid of sex. I wasn't afraid of guys. I was a very friendly person. I had lots of male friends when I was in school. In fact, I believe I had my best boyfriend when I was in Form 1 because I had somebody that was my best in life. They knew in school that. <laughs> they knew in school that he was begging me to give like a peck. I don't know if I ever had, I ever gave that boy a peck. Then he was my best. Like people say, oh, she's dating this boy, she's dating this boy. So, but for me, I think I had fear within me. There was this fear, you know, the, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the thing of me. Me, it was fear of pregnancy, fear of that. You know that one day I'm gonna use you now. Yeah, I was afraid. I had fear in me, and then I had this one friend also when I was in from one, from from one to I got to the university. We always used to talk about sex, and we used to say we have sex only when we get married, and we're together afraid, join our fears together. <laughs> and I had this thing that if I spend time with a guy, and I'm going back home, I feel like my mom can just 
look at me, I don't know, this one was eating ice cream somewhere with one guy. So, even on 11 February, I'll go out with my male friends. By the time I'm coming back to the house, I'm, I'm feeling guilty, like it's almost as if I've gone and had sex. So that fear, I think it guarded me and most importantly, I'll say the grace of God. Because when I got older and got to the university, I put myself in so many situations that would have led me to having sex. But for some reason, somehow I was just safe from it and I ended up not having sex until I met my husband. So I think um, it has to, I think I, I thank the fear that I had. I thank the fear that I had and my friend as well. I'll share a story with you guys as well. When I was in the university, I had this boyfriend who wanted us to have sex. And then I went and told my friend. And she gave me one uh, story, storyline that I should tell him. I should tell him that I was raped. I mean, rape is not something that you joke about. Oh, yeah. At that point, when she told me, I was just like, so if I tell him that, he will know that that's what. Because the guy was actually like, why am I? Maybe he had had other relationships, and in those relationships, the girls were like open to sex. So I probably he was, he was, and he was somebody that I really liked, and he really liked me a lot. We had known each other for a long time. So she told me, just tell him that you were raped when you were small. So. It, it, so it, it's causing you to be <laughs> and I did that you guys anyway let's move on with this video so now we're going to be asking the question should you prepare for sex when you're not yet married because it's almost like a taboo talk to talk about sex when you're not married I mean I hope that we are debunking that and we are moving into an era where we can freely share our opinions about sex but so now we want to talk about should we actively prepare for sex. Should you should you like Carol right now? Carol is not married. Should she go on the internet and say um, sex positions? What's the best way to have sex with your partner? Like, is, is it okay for people to really prepare about uh, prepare for sex before they get into marriage? Let's have Brenda tell us about that. Okay, um, what I'm going to say with is I love the example you gave about Carol going to the internet to check about sex positions. When I got married, I understood why God wants us to wait because my husband was a full package. Trust me, there is nothing like going around. Oh, I'm having those bones. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing about. Talking about. There's nothing about. You're not married. You don't need to check. You don't need to check online when God gives you. You don't need to check online when God gives you. He gives you everything. Even in His weaknesses, is what you need for the ministry. When I mean ministry, like marriage is a ministry yes. itself. So you don't need a, you don't need to worry about that. It's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. But don't bother if it's going to be tight, long, short, they, no, it's fine. Everything will be fine. Mm-hmm. It's a full package. Yes. But to prepare, I think the preparation is a lot of itself. Mm-hmm. Like from the place of okay, because God was so intentional about sex that He gave us orgasms and He gave us ejaculations and all of that. And because of that, I think that we need to enjoy sex. So because we need to enjoy it, you cannot just enjoy it like as that. that. It yeah. cannot just happen like that. Mm-hmm. You need to prepare for it. Mm-hmm. So because of that, I would say you need to heal. You need to have an, an emotional therapy or spa or examination of have I been hurt. Some people, because of the kind of relationship they have with their dad, it's translating to their husband, mm-hmm. so it's affecting their sex life. Yeah. So I think the preparation is more at the level of self mm-hmm. than the other person. Mm-hmm. Because the other person, God God, God has brought you cover. Mm-hmm. Forget about the other person. But for me, I think if what I have to tell somebody like Carol, I'll tell her, work on yourself, work on your esteem. You know, growing up as girls, we used to have to move insecurities. Mm-hmm. Maybe you had a with big score mm. or large boobs mm. or you know people always want to put yes. those weaknesses to your face and you do, you didn't know that those weaknesses can affect you trust me it's a sister talking to you it can affect your sex life and it's important for you to always have a date with yourself to face those things that you cannot face with the world mm. and prepare and be like okay i am not comfortable with having a big stomach but i can work on it like the other day i went to our house and I saw my younger sister and I was like, but no, you have to stop eating, your brain so fat. And when I said it, it just came out like that. But when I went back home, I felt bad because it was, I just gave it to her. Like, like you know when you go to your, your, your parents' house and you just see your siblings and you're just like, just what correcting. is happening? You're just correcting everybody up and down. <laughs> like, why, why are you going so fat, bird? And I was like, I will not want to have truth. I will not want, want to hear it like tell that. me that. Yeah. So work on it at the level of self rather than the other person because God has got you covered and not because the other person is not a factor but because sex starts from yourself before it goes to the other person so wow. you need to prepare wow that's true and and just to add to that i like how you said that prepare 
from the mind because I was asking if Carol should go online and look at no. styles. If you know all the styles on earth no. and you are not prepared mentally, because mm -hmm. I think your orgasm actually starts from your that mind. Yes, yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. and that's why a lot of women actually have sex but they don't get the pleasure that they are supposed to get. I would like to move over to our sister event. Okay, um, I think from my own personal point of view, I, as I said earlier, I had to wait to be married, so um, it was a little bit difficult for me when I eventually got into it because I was waiting with no preparations. I was not even checking on the internet. I was not, you know, I was just like, you know, looking at every other thing except sex. So um, it was a little bit difficult. But I think that if I studied on it, how to please my man, how to, you know, the sex positions and all those things before I got into it. Although my mom, as I said, helped me even up to now with information that I need, you know, but if I studied on it for myself, I think it would have really been better. Mm -hmm. okay. From what they've said, it's important for us to learn about sex and it's important to learn first for yourself. I remember listening to a video sometime and um, this lady was saying that people, is it you who filmed that video? Is Shelly Carol who filmed that video? That a reaction video to a lady was saying that you should test the people you're get, going to get married to. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. somebody, somebody filmed that video. A YouTuber filmed it. And the, the lady was actually saying that women should test the men. And one pastor said that, I think it's Pastor King, he said that it doesn't matter how many men you test, yeah. how many tryouts you do. Your husband is different, or your wife is different. So your experience with all those other men and women that you had is instead an experience that will pollute your experience yeah. with your partner because yeah. you might go and meet yeah, yeah. you yeah. might go and meet somebody that will give you yeah. um, what style head stamp or whatever, yeah. and you come and meet a partner who has not gotten to that level or who might never get there. But you have to understand their own sex language and you build a new yeah. sex language with them as a couple. So I think um, trying to learn. How to and learn about sex doesn't mean you go and have sex. Learning about sex means you get to know yourself, understand what you're uncomfortable about on your body, and then you work on it, and then you try to just know that the literature of it, if you have to, but not the practicals, because the practical, like Brenda said, what has it come back? What, 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 what has it come back? back? Okay, I'm also giving it for the times, giving for like the basics. Like it's after I got married that I really got knowledgeable about things like ovulation and all that. Yeah, so, me too. You get so instead we focus on what the non-essentials because everybody knows about sex, but you don't know about the menstrual cycle. Yeah. So you see, we have this space priorities. Yes. So if you cannot even tell what is the difference between the vagina, the vulva, all these things. Then it's why are you concerned true. about? I didn't want to start having kids. Yes, until you see. So we know about sex, but what concerns you? You really don't know. So yes. the priorities are not really right. Wow, wow! This was really a wonderful video. I'm so glad that I could have you guys here. Um, we're supposed to talk about sex in marriage. I don't know. We're going to probably have a part two in this video. But yeah, we're going to end here for now. If you have questions, please leave it in the comment section. I'm so thankful that you girls will make out time and come and let's film this video. I hope that you've been blessed by it. If you've oh. made a decision to stay and not have sex, keep going. It's something that you're going to see the reward. You don't need to test it. You don't yeah. need to test it because whoever you're testing with might not just be your partner. Yes. So yeah. So thank you so much for watching to this point. Um, we have Yvette, we have Carol, and we have Brenda Kimbi. So please, you guys, go and check out their channels and definitely subscribe and you have great content on there. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.